Good evening. I want to talk to you tonight from my heart. In recent months, members of my administration and officials of the Committee for the Re-Election of the President, including some of my closest friends and most trusted aides, have been charged with involvement in what has come to be known as the Watergate Affair. The inevitable result of these charges has been to raise serious questions about the integrity of the White House itself. Tonight, I wish to address those questions. Forty years ago, on August 9, 1974, President Richard M. Nixon resigned from office and lifted off in the presidential helicopter from the White House lawn. His departure came two years after the third-rate burglary of Democratic headquarters in the Watergate building in Washington, D.C. Connecticut's former Republican U.S. Senator Lowell P. Weicker, Jr., now 83, is the last surviving member of the Senate Select Committee that investigated the Watergate break-in, related conspiracies, and dirty tricks. Ultimately, the president was forced to resign or be impeached. Weicker, a three-term senator who later served four years as governor of Connecticut, was a Senate freshman and one of three Republicans on the seven-man committee. Many of Watergate's issues still echo. Relations between Congress and the executive branch, presidential exercise of power, internal spying, impeachment, war powers, and campaign finance. Weicker spoke with the day about the lessons Watergate has for Americans today. In retrospect, I think you'd have to say that we were doing something that had never been done before, that we brought a president of the United States into the spotlight as far as his conduct was concerned, as far as his uh, upholding the Constitution was concerned. But to say I've been thinking about it for 42 years is probably not correct. I tried to forget about it as fast as I could after it was over. And I mean that because I, I felt that really Watergate was a negative exercise. He took every aspect of the Constitution of the United States and trashed it. Whether it was privacy, whether it was uh, the sanctity of your home, the president making sure that the laws were not enforced. To have the man that you feel best represents the American people, it was a huge, huge tragedy. What Watergate did was it really brought the workings of our government and its people, those who govern, into everybody's living room. Up to that point, politicians, not just the President of the United States, but a United States Senator or a Congressman was absolutely above the fray. When the hearing started, no American believed that a president could do wrong to the point of impeachment. Any more than he thought his congressman or his senator could do wrong. With Watergate, that all ended. Everybody in elected office was open to scrutiny. That was the end of the free pass days. And maybe to an excess, uh, people question everything now. Uh, everything becomes this gate and that gate. And of course, none of them really relate in the same uh, way in terms of seriousness to what happened uh, at, at the Watergate. I start off over here, a Nixon fan and somebody that liked his policies, and I end up full circle over here, obviously not having a great respect for the man. But in the end, uh, uh, Nixon just despised the whole committee, no matter whether those who were for him, uh, much, much less those that were against him. I can remember very well my own turning point. Uh, I had been pursuing a private interview with John Dean 
And Dean turned to me, John turned to me, and said, aren't you afraid uh, that the president has something on you? But it was that moment in time, that meeting with John Dean, that made me realize that these guys weren't kidding around, that they had done things that uh, uh, were much graver than anything that had been reported or investigated up to that point. Section 3 of Article 2, uh, two he, that is the president, shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Do you know anything that the president did or said at any time between uh, June the 17th and the present moment to uh, perform his duty to see that the laws are faithfully executed in respect to uh, the, what is called a Watergate affair? After the hearing was over, I got a call from my father and he said, Lowly said, do you have, you, those of you on the committee, do you have any protection? Bodyguards, et cetera, whatever. This, in essence, was a, an exercise of a democracy that's uh, free and free from all intimidation. And if all of a sudden you're running around bodyguards and security and all the rest, it seems to me somewhat you're defeating the, one of the purposes of, of, your, of, your, of your investigation. But yeah, there were lots of, I received them daily in my office, real threats, but I never asked for any, any security. And neither did any other member of the committee that I know of. What lessons do you think people ought to be focusing on from Watergate? I think the main lesson is that in, in the end we are all responsible for the government in Washington. If we involve ourselves, we're going to get good government. And it's when we don't that matters like Watergate occur and they could occur tomorrow.